Hey, Matthew, today we are doing uh, simplifying radicals, okay? So this is the um, lesson that is kind of the precursor to Pythagorean theorem, uh, which is our first look at geometry for the year. Um, so we do have to get through it before we can get to it because it's really important when we get into Pythagorean theorem and we measure the distances of um, the side lengths of triangles, of right triangles. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started on this. All right, so uh, simplifying radicals, again, is the topic. A radical is this sign right here. Okay, it's just our square root sign, just as a refresher. Uh, what I want you to do is go ahead and on your own, try to list out the perfect squares from 1 to 15. Uh, pause the video and do that, and we'll come back together, um, and I'll post them up here so you can try to check those on your own. All right, so as you can see, I have got all of them listed out here on my screen, um, all the way from 1 to 15. So go ahead and check those, make sure you did them correctly. Um, if not, just correct them as you need to. These are going to be really important to know um, because we're going to use them as we simplify our radicals. All right, so we'll go ahead um, and move on from here. Non-perfect squares can be simplified using these perfect squares that we just found. All right, so that is our goal here, is to be able to do that. All right, so the steps for simplifying non-perfect squares. You may have to pause the video here and there in order to keep up with me and write these down. Uh, so feel free to do that. But step one uh, is if you divide, okay, if you divide by two or three, can you get a perfect square? All right, that's what we're checking for. If you can't, we're going to go ahead and go on to step two. All right, step two, if you find, or excuse me, step two is to find factors of your uh, number. Do any of these get you a perfect square? Okay, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a perfect square when you factor out your number. All right, um, step three, when you are able to find a perfect square, so when you're able to finally do that, write it out with its other factor below your original. All right, and then finally, step four is to simplify the perfect square and write it in front of the other factor so that they are being multiplied together. All right, so that is all four steps that we'll go through, and we'll go through some examples for that. All right, so first example, um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the square root of 40. If I divide it by 2, um, I don't get a perfect square. Same thing with 3, so I'm just going to keep going through factors and try to find one that will work for me. Um, I know that I can divide 40 by 4, all right, and it just so happens that 4 is a perfect square, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it into the square root of 4 and the square root of 10. Now you'll notice I'm multiplying them together, okay? Uh, after I've done that, I now have my two factors here, uh, the first one being the square root of 4. I know that that is 2, so I'm going to rewrite that as 2. And then I'm just going to bring down my other factor, the square root of 10. Okay, And this is the simplified version of the square root of 40. It should be uh, what we read as 2 square roots of 10. Okay, um, I won't do all of the examples just so we can get the video moving quickly because it is a little bit uh, longer. But I'm going to go ahead and look at the second one because it's a great example of when step one works. So step one, I'm going to check for 2 and 3, see if it'll give me a perfect square there. Uh, if I do 2, I get the square root of 2 and the square root of 25. Square root of 25 is a perfect square. So I know that's one uh, that's going to be helpful here. So I have the square root of 25 times the square root of 2, because 25 times 2 is 50. All right, square root of 25 is then 5. And then I'm going to write down my other factor right next to it. So I get 5 square roots of 2. Okay, another example. Uh, I'm going to skip a few of them, and I'm going to go down to this last one, the square root of 26. Now, if you feel like you need more practice, feel free to do these other three as well. There's nothing wrong with that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the square root of 26. Um, the first step, 2 and 3, neither of them give me a perfect square. Um, so I can look through other factors. However, the only other factor, or the only factors of 26, other than 26 and 1, is 2 and 13, okay? Neither of these are perfect squares or can get me to perfect squares. 
which tells me that this is already simplified as far as it goes. So we can't do anything with the square root of 26. All right. So just a couple of notes here. Uh, in order for our radicals to be simplified, we must have three things. Number one, we can't have any hidden perfect squares. Uh, so like in this first example where we had the square root of 40, 4 was the hidden perfect square uh, because it was still in the square root of 40. We hadn't gotten rid of it. So we can't have any of those. The second one, we can't have any fractions inside the radical. And then the third one, we can't have any radicals in the denominator. Okay. So those are the three things that we've got to have in order to be compl completely simplified. I want you to go ahead and do these three got it problems on your own. Pause the video, do that. We'll come back um, and continue on with the notes after that. All right, so hopefully those went well. Next up, we've got uh, these where we have two radicals or two square roots that are multiplied together. The nice thing about these is we can just go ahead and do that multiplication. All right, and that's how we're going to simplify these. So I'm going to do the square root of 2 times the square root of 50. I know that 2 times 50 is 100, and I'm just going to put that under the square root. So now I have the square root of 100, and that works out just perfectly because I also know that the square root of 100 is 10. All right, so that's it for that problem. Nice and simple there uh, once we combine those. The second one, same thing. I can do 12 times 6. Uh, and put that into our radical. 12 times 6 is 72. And now I'm back to the steps that I was doing before. So 2 and 3. Uh, 2 gives me 2 times 36. Uh, and 36 is a perfect square. So I'm now going to write that out. I have the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. Square root of 36 is 6. So I'm left with 30, or excuse me, I'm left with six square roots of two, and that's my simplified radical. Okay, go ahead and try got it problems D and E on your own now, and then we will come back uh, and move on again. All right, so I've got just one more example here for us. Uh, there isn't a got it problem to go with it, but I just want to show you it. It's pretty simple to what, or pretty similar to what we just did. Uh, and got it problems D and E in the previous examples in green. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to do the exact same thing. right? So I'm going to do the square root of 2 times the square root of 8. I'm going to leave the 3 off to the side. I don't need to worry about that right now. So I've got 2 times 8 is 16, goes under the radical. The square root of 16 I know is 4, which means I now have 3 times 4 and 3 times 4 is 12, okay? And that's it for that problem. So uh, really it's the same thing. We can just pretend that that number is not there to start, get it under the radical, and then we can solve from there. All right, so moving on, uh, we're going to look at variables. So what happens if there's variables under the radical? Well, if the exponent is even, that means we have a perfect square. And then obviously if it's odd, that means we don't have a perfect square. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into an example. Um, again, if you need to pause so you can write that down, feel free to do that and then jump in when you're ready. All right, so the first example, we have the square root of x to the fourth power. That is a, an even exponent. Four is an even number. So that means that this one is an example of um, a perfect square. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that exponent and I'm just going to divide it by 2 because right here is an imaginary 2 in our square root on our radical. Okay, 4 divided by 2 is 2, so that is our new exponent when we take it out of the square root. Okay, so the square root of x to the fourth is just x to the second or x squared. Very simple there, just got to divide that. Okay, now if I have one that's not a perfect square, I'm going to do the same thing that I was doing earlier with the numbers. I'm going to split this into two with one of them being a perfect square. Okay, now what I want to do is just pretty much just subtract one off of that number to get my uh, first factor here. So that's going to give me uh, seven minus one is six, so I have x to the sixth here, and then square root of x is left here. All right, the square root of x to the sixth, since it's even, I can just divide the six by two, which gives me three. So I now have x to the third times the square root of x 
and that's my final answer. All right, one last example here. Same thing, this time I have x and y. So uh, the x to the fourth, I know that's even, it's already a perfect square, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out of the radical, and I'm left with this. y to the third is not a perfect square, so I've gotta split it. So I have x squared times, and then I want my square root of y squared times my square root of y, right? Because I did three minus one in order to get this y squared in the middle. Okay, square root of y squared, two divided by two is one, which means I'm gonna end up with x squared times y, or just x squared y on the outside, and then it times the square root of y right there. So that one is, um, there's several steps, maybe a little confusing. Feel free to go back and watch it again if you need to. Okay, uh, I want you to do got it problems f and g. Uh, they're very similar to these two problems, or these three problems that we just did as well. And then after you've done that, feel free to move on again. All right, we are almost done. The last thing we're doing is putting it all together, okay? So, for example, this first one, uh, we have the square root of 30x to the fifth. I'm going to do this. I'm going to find the square root of 30 times the square root of x to the fifth, okay? And now I'm just splitting it into our two uh, problems. So square root of 30, uh, two gives me 15, that's not a perfect square. Three gives me 10, that's not a perfect square. Uh, so there's, if I'm gonna list out my other factors, I've got two, three, uh, five, six, 10, 15, and none of those are perfect squares, okay? So that tells me that's just gonna have to stay as the square root of 30. All right, these two, on the other hand, uh, we have, or excuse me, the x to the fifth can be split into two, right? So we subtract the one from the five, so I get square root of x to the fourth times the square root of x. That can be left as x squared times the square root of x. And now to put it all together, I would have x squared, so whatever's on the outside, times the square root of 30x. Okay, so I just put them back together there. And that is my uh, simplified form of that uh, square root. Okay, next example. Once again, uh, I can go ahead and split these. I'm gonna split these into my numbers and variables again. So I'm gonna do square root of 28, but then I'm gonna go ahead and pull this seven and do the square root of seven here as well. Okay, and then I'm left with my variables, so x squared times square root of x to the third. Okay, now I'm gonna put it all together on both of them. So I have 28 times seven, uh, and I'm gonna need a calculator to do that. So give me just a sec. All right, I got the square root of 196, excuse me. All right, and then I have times the square root of, remember when we did, um, when we multiply exponents, or, or excuse me, when we multiply powers, our exponents are added together. So I do two plus three to get x to the fifth. All right, now I'm ready to go from here. The square root of 196, I know that is a perfect square of 14. So I'm gonna pull it straight down as 14, and then x to the fifth, Okay, I've gotta split that into the square root of x to the fourth and the square root of x. Okay, square root of x to the fourth is x squared, so I'm just gonna drop it down here, and then the square root of x stays as it is, and there's our final simplified solution. Okay, two more got it problems for you to do on your own. Once you're done with those, you're done with the video. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I know this was a little bit of a longer one, so, Thank you for sticking it out. Uh, and again, let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in class.